Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Club, Club Vibes over here at Blockcast with myself, Five, and got my brother with me, Mr. Scott Tripp, aka Big One Trip. Uh, as you guys know, we'll get to jump in over here at, and weigh in at Blockcast on some more detailed topics, get to really break down some of the topics that's going on uh, in the crypto uh, market and some of the latest news. Uh, and today is like no other day. We got to jump into something that's really been a hot topic and over the last two weeks. And now it's starting to materialize a little bit more. And we're starting to see some of the repercussions of uh, some of the things that happen with this protocol. But before we jump into it, to even give you the topic, I'm going to let Scott introduce himself and then we'll jump into it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Scott with Blockcast, of course, happy to be here. Excited to uh, talk about this topic today and kind of breach what everybody's kind of keeping quiet about. I think there is some people talking, but it's not like loudly right now, but it will be loud, I feel, soon enough. So. Yeah, so one of the thing, uh, the topic that we want to talk about is actually going to be the three arrows capital or three AC, as uh, a lot of us know. Uh, and if you guys aren't familiar with who they are, they're actually a, a venture capitalist uh, um, company, and they were responsible for really pumping a lot of bags during this last bull market uh, by adding a lot of liquidity into the market. Uh, but then they made some, uh, you know, somewhat of a, a risky, risky plays. Uh, it kind of shows a. Uh, you know, even if you're losing money in this market uh, or you have, if you're made money in this market, nobody's subject to keep it all the time, right? Anybody can lose it at any time. Um, but it just goes to show, uh, you know, they went out and made some some leveraged trades and they were invested in a lot of seed rounds and they had a lot of money locked up in different protocols. Uh, and some of those did, uh, uh, you know, rug or, or essentially uh, lose liquidity like Luna. They had 600, yeah, they had about 597 million, so close to 600 million in Luna. Uh, and 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 that's this story came out about five days ago um, that they were, you know, losing or, or potentially going to face liquidation uh, if they couldn't get uh, their number if Bitcoin fell below a certain number. Uh, and, and eventually they did uh, eventually get liquidated. But now this is what we call a cascading effect. And Scott's going to tell you a little bit more about some of the recent news that just came up. And I think like when we talk about a cascading effect, this is exactly what we mean. So uh, Scott, you want to take over? Yeah, for sure. So the first article I'll share is right. Actually, I have another article popped open. Give me like one second. I'll just switch it over. There we go. And then I'll pop it open here. Uh, right here. So uh, Voyager Digital reveals 655 million exposure to three arrows capital. It appears that Voyager Digital may be in trouble with respect to its exposure to Three Arrows Capital, whom is also known as 3AC. The firm this morning quietly announced they may issue a notice of default to the firm. Voyager reported uh, has of oh, reportedly has exposure to the crypto hedge fund via 15,250 Bitcoin and 350 million USDC that was loaned to the firm. At 20,000 Bitcoin, it equates to 305 million position in Bitcoin. Collectively, total exposure to the failing hedge fund is estimated at 655 million, a significant potential loss to be swallowed by Voyager. Uh, it's a big loss to be swallowed by Voyager. And I mean, there is people reaching out to them to try and help. But I mean, I just don't understand like this three AC three arrows capital, like to invest in locked up uh, funds. It, it just doesn't make sense, sense that a capital firm would go out and do that. Like I get that they did it, but in the same sense, it's like a degenerate move as far as I'm concerned. Like when they do something like that, that they take out locked funds in hopes that it's going to continue in its growth pattern. We're never going to have a bad market. And once they're out, they're out or whatever. But instead, this backfired on them and it failed. And it just doesn't seem like a season move by a capital firm. But I don't know how you feel, Vibin. Yeah, definitely not a season move. I mean, not as far as the lockups and things of that nature. I think when you think about uh, being in uh, a well or being a seed investor, um, you have to take on that initial risk liquidity. Uh, and that's why your gains are potentially higher. Uh, and that's why they actually have those lockup periods to try to protect the public investors because if these wells were uh, allocated all of your tokens, uh, they would do a lot more damage than, uh, uh, to the general public, I think, um, when those unlocks came about. So I, I don't fault them for that. But the leverage trading uh, and taking out all these loans against uh, Voyager, against uh, um, uh, Anchor Protocol, against uh, all these other things, taking out all these different loans, uh, it just 
goes to show like even in as much as we want to get away from uh, the, 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 the traditional monetary uh, poly, I mean, industry, we, it's hard to do it because we still have men behaving badly in crypto, taking out loans with no intentions on paying them back. Only if the market does well, they pay them back. But uh, category, like because they were a capital venture firm, they were their portfolio, I mean, their spreadsheet had showed them being worth, you know, potentially a couple billion dollars, $3 billion. It's nothing for them to go to an exchange uh, and be able to get a, a long Bitcoin amount. So um, just very sad to see. And it's just one of those things that we got to pay attention to when we're looking at these, uh, what we call DeFi plays and, and uh, you know, giving up your Bitcoins, guys, and, and giving up your Ethereums um, and, and trying to, to get somewhat of a yield back. It's just very risky. Um, it's yeah. almost just safer to keep it in your own wallet. Well, and I'll, I'll just, or you're going to show an article maybe right now too, or? Yeah, yeah. So I'll show, um, I just really wanted to, um, I had an article, but it was like pretty much the beginning uh, what we were talking about. So I really wanted to jump over um, to something that had popped up recently on Twitter that came about. Um, and this was just like some of the people, um, you know, pretty much weighing in and, and pointing out some of the things they had pointed out earlier and saying some of the things that had happened. Um, so honest question, when did you know things were going to shit? Um, your connection with Voyager, wherever that is, is causing major disruption on 3AC and Voyager. Uh, this statement is 20 days out from the public learning of pending liquidation. Uh, liquidation. And then I just really wanted to go through some of the things that they had uh, as far as their assets and, and things of that nature as well, Scott. They, we'll, we'll look at some of the things that they had allocated here. It's pretty, it's pretty, pretty funny. Uh, I won't call it funny, but uh, just here we go. So here's some of the seed rounds uh, that they're locked up in Woo Network. So not all of the positions that they have, oh, Scott, are actually right. negative, right? So some of the some of the protocols could potentially do really well that they're locked up in, but if they get liquidated, it won't matter, you know. So uh, they did have something on the DYXD, uh, Mena, Avalanche, Near, Woo, Balancer, Orca, uh, Lido, Manta, and Stable. So uh, one thing I will say, guys, is when we're looking at things like this, these protocols, if uh, this does continue to cascade, you're going to see more problems on these protocols as well, because those those uh, positions will be they will get liquidated. Uh, so um, just something to pay attention to uh, when you're trying to take in da uh, data and stuff like that uh, from a lot of things that's going on. Oh, can you go upstairs? Sorry. You're all good. But yeah, that's um, all I wanted to show here was just uh, those two things, Scott, uh, and just, you know, just tell people, you know, kind of just pay attention to what's going on and who's involved uh, and keep reading a lot about the news, because even with it, uh, even though a lot of people have talked about this uh, story over the last week, we keep seeing new things emerge and we keep talking, I like to call it a cascading effect, uh, and, and we're starting to see it trickle down. Yeah, definitely. Um, here's that other article I just wanted to share. I mean, there's only so much that this guy can do, too, as well, like. I don't think it's going to be a permanent solution by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> this is the first article I didn't want to share at the very beginning, but I'll share now. Um, so this was today as well. Bitcoin billionaire Sam Bankman fried bails out in battle crypto firms, BlockFi and Voyager. So the Voyager that was saying that they were down because of three arrows is going to borrow money. So uh, from what I read here, with no central bank willing to come to the rescue, beleaguered crypto companies are turning their, to their peers for help. Billionaire crypto exchange boss Sam Friedman has signed a deal to bail out two firms in as many weeks, BlockFi, a quasi-bank, and Voyager Digital, a digital asset brokerage. FTX Bankman Freed's crypto exchange agrees Tuesday to provide BlockFi with a $250 million revolving credit facility. But I mean, I just wanted to mention it quickly and just show you quickly, but in the same sense, that's putting these guys in the same situation that happened with uh, some of these other companies that had their, their money pulled away from them when Bitcoin dropped even to lower values. So is he putting them in a position where he's gonna be like, well, now Bitcoin's dropped even more. I did give you this credit but I'm going to have to pull it back and take some of your equities at the same time as I do this. Like it's a true potential that they're, they're obviously going to look at this and, and do that. So. Yeah. I mean, to me personally, Scott, you know, just my personal opinion, I'm not a big fan of bailouts and government and um, 
it's just like too much of a bailout uh, type of opportunity here in crypto. And I think we're still early along for bailouts and things of that nature. I think when we have, uh, like we like like to say, men behaving badly and, uh, you know, doing things they're not supposed to do, you, you see these type, type of things happen. And it's unfortunate. Uh, but, you know, just give crypto a stain. And I think, you know, that's going to be another plague on the market as we continue to trickle in this bear. We'll, we'll probably shake out a lot of bad projects and bad actors. Yeah, and we'll we'll be seeing in the next few days or week to come what what is exactly going to happen. So, yeah, we'll keep watching it. But uh, guys, we appreciate you tuning in over here at uh, Club Vibe in the Day over at uh, Blockcast. Uh, again, make sure you tune check us out on Twitter as well as the Telegram. Myself and Scott, we're always there. Um, you know, interacting with the community. We're looking for new projects. Uh, so if you got a new project that you're planning on. Um, launching soon and you need help with marketing or uh, anything of that nature just uh let us know over there at telegram you can hit a lala or andy uh and other than that guys uh that's all i have scott you got anything in closing no it should be good sorry you guys about my kids dropping in at the time during this video it's always fun when you have two little ones that are home from school and you're you're trying to film it makes it interesting but you know such is life good, <laughs> part right. of life man all right guys until next time peace out peace see you guys later